Hello again, this is Sickle Yield, and I'm here to talk to you about lighting a night scene in iRay. This can be a little bit tricky. iRay tends to render slower when there's less light in a scene. So I'm going to talk to you first about what not to do, and then we'll go into some of the options for what you should do. First of all, here's my scene. I've left the roof off of the Aslan set here because iRay also renders slower in a fully enclosed geometry. And at the moment, my scene is lit only by my full moon HDR from my own Starry Sky set, this brazier, and magic in the character's hand. This is the biggest mistake that I see people make, and one of the ways you can tell someone who either is very new to rendering in Daz Studio or has just never learned is they render a night scene with just a dark HDR and maybe one or two very dim emissives. And then, as you will momentarily see, you can't really see anything. Or you can see, but it's just a very flat, dull, boring-looking scene. And there are some ways to fix that, and lighting for Daz Studio is actually a lot like lighting for the stage and screen. We use a lot of the same techniques, and there we go. So you can see the lighting from the from the, from the brazier I've tipped over there, and from the magic in the character's hand. But you still can't see much going on here. So I'm going to fix that. And there are different ways to do that. I will first cover the day for night technique, which I, on the whole, do not recommend. It just depends on the effect that you want. But usually, I see this used a lot also, and I really don't recommend it. I'm going to create one spotlight. The only time I would really recommend using something like day for night is if you want to create a, a blue or green effect, like a sort of night vision goggles or night vision camera. But usually um, when you use day for night, you're going to end up with a scene that looks kind of like a, a bad motion picture. So here I've got my one spotlight. You can use a mesh light for this, doesn't matter. Or you can use a, a point light with an IES on it, which renders faster, I've just been learning recently. But for now I'm going to use a spotlight, and I'm going to set some geometry here. I'm going to set a disk, and render emitter to off, and leave my temperature at... I'm going to put my temperature at zero, because that actually causes the color of the light to be neutral. And then I'm going to say 15,000 lumens to start with, and see what that looks like in my scene. All right, here we go with my 15,000 lumen white light. The objects are a bit more obvious. The background is somewhat lit here so that you can sort of see the objects behind her. It's still a bit dull in that it doesn't particularly draw attention to the character or provide that sharp drama, but it does create more of an impression of more time passing or of stillness. If you want that impression of stillness, a more evenly lit scene is not a bad way to do that. And another thing I can do that you'll see a lot in DC Comics movies, because they like their night scenes, is to just tint everything very blue with a light to indicate that it's nighttime. And here is what that looks like. This is another mistake, I think, that I see a lot. I don't care for this because... Again, the blue actually makes the scene flatter and less contrasted than what I had before, than, than the zero tint light. So this is a technique that does get used. It usually gets used in conjunction with another technique that I am about to show you, which is that I'm going to highlight the figure in the foreground with a brighter light and leave a much darker background. So I'm going to switch back to textured mode here, away from the preview mode. And I'm going to use Create Spotlight again. And I used Apply Active Viewport Transforms again. And then I'm going to use the camera view to position that light over here to the direction the character is facing. Like so and maybe pull back a little bit. First, I'm going to leave this in point mode rather than giving it distinct geometry because I want sharp shadows here. And I'm going to give the light something like 150 lumens, a nice bright light, 
maybe even more than that. Let's see how it looks at 200, because the effect I want is one that, for example, Rembrandt used, and which has sometimes been called chiaroscuro, which just means light and dark, because we want a sharp contrast of the light shining on the character and the darkness of the room behind her. And I may even exaggerate this by turning down the HDR, or even turning the scene from dome and scene to scene only, since I can't see the sky anyway. There we go. That gives me a nice dramatic light on the character. There's no mistaking that this is a night scene, because there's so much darkness around the edges of the scene, and yet you can clearly see the character in the foreground. And this gives the scene a greater feeling of urgency, with less of that quiet, muted feel that you get from the day for night or the blue for night look. I also made a mistake in my speech earlier. I said that I had 100 lumens on the light, or 200, and it's actually 200,000, not, not 200 lumens. That would have been a really dark scene unless I had changed the tone mapping by quite a bit. So we've talked about day for night or blue for night, and we've talked about chiaroscuro, the lit foreground against the dark backdrop. I'm going to offer a third option also, which isn't certainly for every scene, but for certain types of horror scenes or very dramatic scenes, it could be great to have, and that's backlighting. So in this case, I'm going to take my spotlight and it's gonna go behind the character. So spotlight three here, and I'm just going to rotate that around, and then I'm going to click on Genesis 8 Female and hit the frame button up here. It looks like a square with a plus sign in it, if you can't see it because it's so small on your screen. There we go. And I'm just going to pull that back a little bit here from her. And in this case, I'm going to probably leave it in point mode again for a sharper, distinct contrast. And I may need to lift that up out of sight, because in the scene, the point mode light does not have to be visible. But if I should end up wanting to change it to mesh, I will need to move it out of sight, because even if you turn off render emitter, which I always do here in the light settings, render emitter, even if you turn that off, a geometry light will still show a round or square piece to indicate the geometry, which is very annoying and somewhat negates the purpose of using a spotlight instead of a mesh light. The main reason that I like spotlights is that they're easier to position because you can look through them through the camera view. So I'm going to turn this up somewhat bright here. I'm actually going to set that spotlight all the way up to 400,000 lumens because I'm going to lower the temperature to 4,000 to make that light warmer. Um, that may sound paradoxical. When you lower the temperature in kelvins, the light itself actually becomes more yellow and then more red. So it looks warmer even though the temperature is lower, if that makes sense, because you're moving toward the infrared spectrum and away from the violet spectrum. So lights that are high temperature look colder to the eye and lights that are low temperature look warmer. Okay, here we are. In the scene, you can see that the character is now strongly backlit because this is eye ray and we can do translucency on hairs. Her hair creates a little bit of a halo around her head. And let me see, I don't think I have Bloom turned on, but let me check here. I don't. I'm also going to change my pixel filter to Mitchell and maybe 0.8. Another PA suggested this. It might have been Bobby25, but I don't remember. So if I have not given you credit and it was you, I apologize. But I'm also going to turn my Bloom filter on. The reason I did the Mitchell filter there is because it tends to render a bit faster without a significant hit to the appearance of the final render. So I'm going to turn on Bloom here, set my radius down to maybe 0 0.03, and my threshold higher to, say, 60,000. The lower that threshold is, the stronger the blur of the Bloom. So at 60,000, there is a bit of Bloom around the, the magic and the fire without blurring out the outlines of the figure. So there I have my backlit look. Now I can actually combine all three of these because between the three of them, they form something like a traditional three-point lighting rig where this backlight is like a rim light and my chiaroscuro light 
that bright offside light is like a key. And then my dim light that's pulled back to dimly light the whole scene, that's sort of a fill light. And so I can combine those and I have my key, my fill, and my rim, as you would see used in some film scenes or in a studio session or in stage lighting. I'm going to leave the color of my fill light whitish so that the blue doesn't create a really overly color saturated scene. And we'll see how those look together. I may need to end up turning down one or more of them because I've been lighting the scene with them separately. So I'm going to cut while the test render runs and maybe adjust the levels of those and come back. And we're back! I did end up turning all of them down, basically. I have the backlight here, the rim, set down to 300,000 lumens, same temperature. And the key light the, set to 150,000. And then that fill light set down to... Actually, I think I left it at 15. It looks like I did. So I may try a little bit of a blue tint here to see what happens. But before I do that, you can see that using all three at different values gives me a richer and more nuanced look to my scene than using just one. So it's certainly valid to combine the different techniques. You don't want any of those lights to be as strong as the others. You want them to be different levels. If they're all equal, you get more of a soft box look that doesn't give the impression of a real interior or a real outdoors. It just really feels like a studio. Okay, I've given that a little bit of a blue tint and a little bit of a blue fill. Very, very weak blue. And that's not too bad. So today we covered the techniques of backlighting or rim lighting, using a strong contrast foreground against a dark background, and the day for night or blue for night technique, and that you can combine them to create a richer, more complex lighting setup for your scene. And of course, you can add bloom around your lights to add some more drama as well. So that's some basics of lighting a night scene or a scene that's intended to be in a dark environment. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.